Point show. I'm Jimmy Evans. On today's program, I'm talking about two raptures. Are there two raptures? There's a lot of confusion about is the rapture before the tribulation? Is it after the tribulation? Are there two raptures? I'll be talking about that. I'm also going to be talking about a news article right now about Iran and Israel, the bombings that have been happening. Uh, the Islamic Jihad, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, has been bombing Israel. Almost a thousand rockets have been fired. Probably by now, there's been over a thousand. This is a great escalation now in the battle, the, really the war between Israel and Iran and Iran's proxies. I'm going to be talking about my opinion about what's going to be happening. That's the subscriber portion. The teaching is going out to everyone, including YouTube. But the subscriber portion of the program today, I'm talking about that. I'm also answering questions from our subscribers. This is These are some of the questions I'll be answering. The first is, why do some people get to make mistakes all their lives, be the worst person for decades, and then find their way to Christ. And some people die when they're still young and dumb and haven't really had a chance to figure that out. Does God already know their future that they would never turn around and so he lets them pass away early into damnation? Here's another question. What happens if you're pregnant during the rapture? Another question. Why does God bind Satan for a thousand years instead of just throwing him into the lake of fire with a false prophet in the Antichrist? Those are good questions. I'll be answering those questions today. Again, this is the subscriber portion. The When I talk about the news articles, when I uh, answer questions from subscribers, if you're watching on YouTube, I want you to become a subscriber for $7 a month, $77 a year. You don't just get the full program here. You get uh, Mark Hitchcock, Dr. Mark Hitchcock's podcast tomorrow. Uh, wonderful podcast, uh, Marking the Times. All of our articles, Q&A that goes on all week long in the news articles and things like that. So I want you to become a subscriber of endtimes.com. So the question today, this is actually a question from Becky. Uh, and I read her question. And what I wanted to do was just to unpack this fully and not answer it quickly. But here's Becky's question. Is Matthew 24 written in chronological order of events? The tribulation is mentioned prior to the verses that speak to the rapture. Reading it chronologically, it would make a good argument for a post-tribulation rapture. And Becky, I'm so glad that you asked that question because this is something I, I, I needed to patiently talk about for a long time. And that's why I'm so glad you asked that question so I can talk about this today. A lot of people get very confused related to Matthew 24. Matthew 24 should help people, but really it confuses people. It confused me too for years because it does talk very specifically about a post-tribulation rapture, a very graphic description of a post-tribulation rapture. Okay, so Becky's question begins with, is Matthew 24 written in chronological order? The first part of it is, the second part of it is not. Okay, so let me answer it this way. So let's go to the first part of Matthew chapter 24. And Jesus is being asked, What's going to happen at the end times? And he answers chronologically okay, to a certain point. This is Matthew 24. Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him uh, to show the, him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said, Do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say, yet one, not one stone will be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming? And of the end of the age. And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places, all these are the beginning of sorrow. So let's, let's stop right here. So Jesus, these are the birth pangs. This is where we are right now. By the way, we're seeing many of these things happening right now. And the pieces of rebuilding the temple are in place. So if you want to see firsthand the places being discussed in these verses, many other key end times locations plan to join Pastor Ed Young and myself this December for our tour of Israel. We're going to have a great time. Pastor Ed Young and myself, we're taking a very large group. There's still room for you. And by the way, we have five-star groups that are staying in the best places. We have economy groups. There's there's different price ranges that you can pick when you go. So if you want to stay in the best hotels and have all the best accommodations, we have a places for you. If you want to go more of an economy route, we have that also. Again, go on endtimes.com and sign up to go to the Israel trip coming up this November. And so the, what is happening right now is the fulfillment of the first part of Matthew 24. Wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. You, you can check that box. It's happening all over the world 
right now, but also famines and earthquakes and all those kinds of things like that in pestilences. These things are happening right now. So we're, we're in the birth pains. And I've said this before, you know, when a woman's having a baby, the birth pains start kind of mild. You know, I'm, I'm saying mild. I don't think a woman would say that. They're kind of mild. And then they get very intense and very close together. We're seeing intense birth pains right now, extremely intense. And so I believe a birth is about to happen. And that birth is the kingdom of God and the rapture and things like that. But Jesus is now in chronological order, just going through the signs of the time. He said, the end is not yet. These are the beginning of birth pains. This is verse nine. Now he's going to continue to go in chronological order. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. Now this is going to, now we're into the tribulation and you'll be hated by all nations for my namesake. And then many will be offended. We'll betray one another and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. And the gospel, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel, the prophet standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who's on the housetop not go down to take anything out of his house. And let him who's in the field not go back to get his clothes. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. And pray that your flight may not be in winter or on the Sabbath. For then there will be great tribulation, such as not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Then if anyone says to you, look, here's the Christ or there, do not believe it. For false Christ and false prophets will rise up and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you beforehand. Therefore, if they say to you, look, he is in the desert, do not go out. Or look, he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man. For wherever the carcass is, there the eagles be gathered together. And this is where he talks about the rapture. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened. The moon will not give its light. The stars of the, uh, uh, will fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. Then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Okay, so let's stop right here. Now, this is all chronological and he goes right to the end of the tribulation and Jesus says graphically, immediately after the tribulation of those days. And he says, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give us light, the stars of the heaven will, will not shine, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. So he's describing a very, very terrible time. He says, unless those days have been shortened, no flesh would have survived. So let me first of all begin, because in the last program, I was talking about the case for a pre-tribulation rapture, okay, which I, I hope I made clearly. There is a post-tribulation rapture. J Jesus says, immediately after the tribulation of those days. There's no doubt about the fact that he's talking about at the end of the tribulation, there, there's going to be a gathering of the living and the dead people who accepted Christ after the first rapture and during the tribulation. So after these verses, okay, after verse 31, Jesus changes timelines here, okay. He's not on the same timeline. Jesus is now talking about preparing for a pre-tribulation rapture. And I'll prove this to you. Now, this is verse 32. Learn this parable from the fig tree. Now, he's changing. This is, this is different. He's no longer talking about the tribulation. Learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the doors. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my father only. But as the days of Noah were, now listen to this, because this is very different from the end of the tribulation. As the days of Noah were, so also will be the coming of the son of man. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know, and know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Two men will be in the field, one will be taken, the other left. 
Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken, the other left. Watch therefore, for you do not want, know what hour your Lord is coming. So now, this is, this is completely different from the text before that. The text before that, Jesus is saying, unless those days have been cut short, no flesh will have survived. Great tribulation is going to come on the world. This does not happen in, in the history of the world, nor ever will be. Uh, the, the sun will be dark and the moon will not give its light. The powers of the heavens will be shaken. Jesus graphically describes in the first part of Matthew 24, the worst time in the history of the world. Then he starts talking about, look at the signs of the times and be ready when I come because my coming will be like in the days of Noah. They were buying, selling, marrying, giving in marriage, business as usual. There is no business as usual at the end of the tribulation. Okay, there's a stark contrast. Listen to this verse. This, this is where Jesus talked about the tribulation. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, the stars will fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven will shake it. Listen to these words now. As the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days of Noah, or as in the days before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark. They did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man. One of the most important doctrines uh, concerning the rapture is imminency. Now, Jesus can come. I believe that some year Jesus is going to come during the Feast of Trumpets. I've talked about that before on the program, which happens in the fall of the year. Next year, it will be during our conference that the Feast of Trumpets uh, happens. But it could happen any time. Jesus can come any time he wants to. But imminency is a very important doctrine. But you have to understand that when the abomination of desolation takes place, Jesus said, because some people would say there is no pre-tribulation rapture. The rapture happens at the end of the tribulation. You can actually count. Jesus said you won't know the day or the hour. You can actually count the days from the abomination of desolation until the second coming of Jesus. Let me show you in Scripture. Daniel 9.27 says this. This is, this is Gabriel talking to Daniel. He shall confirm a covenant. The Antichrist shall confirm a covenant with many, Israel, for one week, for seven years. But in the middle of the week, he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering, and on the wing of abomination shall be one who makes desolate, even until the consummation which is determined is poured out on the desolate. Okay, there's going to be a seven-year covenant. The Antichrist is going to show up. The tribulation begins when the Antichrist confirms a covenant with Israel for seven years. In the middle of the seven years, what just said in Daniel 9, the abomination of desolation takes place. Okay, so right in the very middle. Okay, this is Daniel chapter 12. Then I, Daniel, looked and there stood two others, one on this river bank and one on the other river bank. And one said to the other man clothed in linen who was above the waters of the river, how long shall the fulfillment of these wonders be? Then I heard the man clothed in linen who was above the waters of the river when he held up his right hand and his left hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever that it shall be for a time, times, and half a time. And when the power of the holy people has been completely shattered, all these things shall be finished. Although I heard, I did not understand. Then I said, my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Many shall be purified, made white, and refined. But the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand. But the wise shall understand. And from the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away, and the abomination of desolation is set up, there shall be 1,290 days. Blessed is he who waits and comes to the 1,335 days. Now there are three periods of time being talked about here in Daniel 12 that are very important. The first, the question was asked, how long is this going to happen? And it was 1,260 days, a time, times, and half a time. Israel used a 360-day uh, lunar calendar. So that's 1,260 days. The second time here in verse 11, it says there will be 1,290 days. That's 1,260 days, three and a half years, plus 30 days. It says, blessed is he who waits and comes to the 1,335 days. That's actually the beginning of the millennium after the second coming, after the abomination of desolation has been removed, after the sheep and goat judgment and all those things have happened, there's the inauguration of Jesus as king and the millennial kingdom begins. That's the reason that there's a time difference. But here's what I'm trying to say. So Jesus said we wouldn't know the day or the hour. We're just told the days right there. We are told exactly the timeline right there. So if you're alive during the tribulation, there is no imminency whatsoever. 
When you see the abomination of desolation, the entire world is going to see it all at the same time. According to Revelation 11, they're going to see the, the two witnesses get killed. They're going to see everything the Antichrist is doing. If you see it, you could literally take your calendar out and say, Jesus is coming right here. And so there's no imminency. So I'm saying when you look at Matthew 24 and Becky was saying, it seems to me like, you know, Re Matthew 24 is a good uh, proof of a post-tribulation rapture. It sure is. Jesus graphically says there's going to be a post-tribulation rapture. Then he turns around and starts talking about the signs of the time. We won't know when he's coming. And it's going to be like the days of Noah buying and selling, marrying, giving in marriage. Now, understand this. At the end of the tribulation, there is no buying, selling, marrying, giving in marriage. Over half the world's population is dead. The earth has been under judgment after judgment after judgment, the worst of which are the bold judgments at the very end. There's no buying and selling, marrying, giving in marriage. Jesus said, unless those days have been cut short, no flesh would have survived. And remember, Jesus said it will be like the days of Noah before the flood. OK, so this is a prejudgment, a pre-wrath uh, text here that Jesus is talking about two different periods of time. Again, Jesus said, unless those days have been cut short, no flesh would have survived. Then he's over here talking about buying, selling, uh, planning, building, giving in marriage, those things like that. And so it's a very, very easy text for me. Of course, I've studied for a long time. But Becky's question was, is this chronological? Is Matthew 24 chronological? It is up until verse 31. Jesus begins when his disciples question him. He begins by talking about the birth pain judgments, all the things that will be happening up until the tribulation. Then he says, then you're going to be going to great tribulation. He talks about the abomination of desolation. He talks about the second coming when every eye will see him. The rapture of pre-tribulation rapture is a private event that take place in the sky between Jesus and the believers. The earth doesn't know anything other than a lot of believers have disappeared. The second coming, every eye will see him. His feet come down, touch the Mount of Olives. There's going to be, again, a great rapture of the saints, the living and dead saints. People have been saved during the tribulation. So when you read the full text of Matthew 24, you see a chronological account that Jesus gives from verse 1 all the way down until verse 31. Then he changes and said, look at the signs of the times. Look at the fig tree. All these things happening. It's going to be like the days of Noah. So I believe that there's going to be in any time now, because again, imminency. Right now, we don't know. Even if Jesus comes during Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah is a two-day feast. You still don't know the day or the hour, even if you knew. And by the way, Rosh Hashanah is known as the day that no one knows by the Jews. That's one of the ways that they... Uh, talk about the Feast of Trumpets. And so I believe some year Jesus is going to come during the Feast of Trumpets, but he could come anytime he wants to. Okay, I could be wrong about that. And so, and by the way, the fulfillment of the Feast of Trumpets could be uh, the Matthew 24 rapture at the end of the tribulation because Jesus said he's going to come with the trumpet then too. I believe in imminency and I believe that we need to look at scripture very carefully. So Matthew 24 is chronological up to verse 31, then it's not. Jesus goes back to before the rapture, the rapture of the church, a pre-tribulation rapture that he graphically describes there. And so that's what I believe. There are two raptures, one before. So if you're confused and you think you have to choose either a pre-tribulation rapture or a post-tribulation rapture, you don't have to choose. There's two of them. Why is there two? Because there's two groups going. There's the church today. I'm a part of the church. If you're a believer in Christ, you're a part of the church. Okay. When the rapture comes, we're all going to be gone from here. But then after the tribulation begins, Revelation 7 talks about a massive revival that takes place during the tribulation. There'll be many people martyred and many people that die of the judgments that happen during the tribulation. But the good news is they're saved. Some people will actually survive on the earth, the tribulation. One way or the other, at the end, they're going to be gathered up just like we were. They'll be a part of the church. They'll rule and reign with Jesus for a thousand years. And so that's that's what I believe. I believe that Matthew 24 is another text that very graphically describes a pre-tribulation and a post-tribulation rapture. I want you to be a part of the first group. And I want to remind you, we have the book. My daughter and I wrote a book called Where Are the Missing People? It's a book to leave behind. Uh, is so that you put it on your coffee table or on your nightstand in your car, your apartment, your dorm room, your your office, wherever. It's something that you just put there because when the rapture happens, 
the number one question everyone is going to be asking is, where are the missing people? Where are these missing people? And they'll pick, pick this book up. It'll lead them to the Lord. It'll also tell them what's about to happen in the world and how to, how to deal with it, uh, to know what's happening during the tribulation. So that little book there, you can get it uh, on uh, xlmarriage.com. You can get it on missingpeoplebook.com. And if you're buying more than one, we have great discounts there. You can also buy it on amazon.com. But we wrote that specifically for all of us who are expecting the rapture to happen, just have that laying there for people to be able to read.